talking about the optics, the hits and misses of the McLean's National Leaders Debate. Nancy McDonald joining us right now to break it all down. Uh, quite the tease before the break. Two winners, two losers. Who, in your eyes, uh, emerged as the uh, the winners last night? Well, I thought two, there were two campaign war rooms that are happy today, and that was Justin Trudeau and Elizabeth May's campaign rooms. Uh, I thought uh, Elizabeth May came in. She was relaxed. She owned that dais. She was strong, not just on the on, on the environment, which obviously she should be strong on, but on foreign policy. She really knew the issues. Uh, she did phenomenally, I thought. And uh, and Justin Trudeau was also, uh, you know, a clear winner. Um, he was particularly strong in that first segment on the economy. Um, perhaps a bit weak on, the, on on environment and energy issues, but uh, you know, he, he yesterday morning he invited reporters into a, to a boxing uh, gym in Toronto, and uh, you know that could have backfired on him because he, he could have looked he could have looked really cocky and he could have looked really stupid had he done poorly last night. But he came out strong. I thought he did well. So in terms of uh, Thomas Mulcair and Stephen Harper, clearly everybody came out of the gate wanting to attack Stephen Harper. Why do you think the Mulcair camp today might be thinking we didn't hit it the way we should have? I mean, I thought Mulcair was slow. His delivery was a little odd. It was almost like someone had slipped him a Xanax before he started. He was, uh, but he did warm up. I mean, he, 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 he as the night wore on, he did a lot better. But uh, the initial, uh, uh, initially, I thought he was weak. You know, the optics of the debate are always interesting. How much do you think was communicated without words, just looking at the body language of these candidates and what they were communicating? Well, again, I think Mulcair's body language was a little stilted. Where uh, you know Elizabeth May, look at her right there, calm, relaxed, confident. It was really something how Elizabeth May came forward with um, some serious statistics on, as you said, more than just the environment, which is sort of the expected. And that in her closing comments, she did say, "We're more than a one-person party. We're more than a one-topic party." Uh, what I found fascinating going through this debate was when. The overspeak began, and Paul Wells, the moderator, was was able to keep things sort of at bay, but did let them have their true debate vibe. And every now and then, the "that's not true" coming out. Yeah, I mean, she was able to jump in. She scored some serious points um, uh, against uh, uh, Mr. Harper and uh, and against Mr. Melcare. You know, standout moments across the board. Before we get to the moments, it kind of, you look at how things are played out in social media the next morning and the Conservative Party coming out declaring themselves, the, you know, the clear winner. Uh, what was a standout moment to determine winner or loser when it comes to the topics? I mean, we talk Elizabeth May, I think, about the challenge to Mr. Mulcair about the pipeline was a big standout moment. But what for you were the standouts? Um, well, if you want to go leader by leader, I think uh, Trudeau on the economy coming out and saying, uh, Mr. Harper is disconnected, living in 24 Sussex, not feeling the effects of the recession. Um, Elizabeth May, I think, uh, uh, in foreign policy, coming out and showing she's got serious chops. Um, uh, that was a standout moment for her. Uh, Mr. Mulcair was strong when it talk came to the environment. Not surprising. This is a former Quebec uh, environment minister, you know, in a province that takes those issues seriously. Uh, so he showed his strengths there. And then, oddly enough, uh, when talk turned to Quebec, I thought Mr. Harper was was really strong. It turned into a two-way fight between uh, Mulcair and Justin Trudeau. And Harper reminded everyone that this is not an issue that's top of mind in Quebec. So why are we even talking about these things? So going back to uh, the fact that the um, that the Stephen Harper's camp has now literally put out on social media that they have won this debate. Is this all posturing? Because it seems that his tack is this, you know, go with what you know, go with what's established, go with, with what's been quote-unquote respected around the world. Right. But, I mean, interestingly, uh, uh, Mr. Harper last night did admit that we are veering off into a recession. So I think uh, he's going to have a tougher time trying to uh, uh, fight this campaign on, uh, on the issue of the economy uh, because, you know, as he acknowledged, we're slipping into a recession. And I think his, his, uh, he's going to try to tell Canadians that uh, he's going to use the fear aspect. You know, all around us, G8 countries are doing poorly, and that could be us. Um, um, but it's not because of me. But it's not because of me. Yeah. Right. Interesting, too, that when they did talk about environmental issues and Elizabeth May challenged Thomas Mulcair directly, do you stand with us 
on this. And then it became, it, it seemed to become very British Columbia versus Ontario, Quebec. Right. Tankers, tankers and uh, freighters versus the pipeline and sending bitumen right. to, to other countries. I mean, I thought there was a key moment there. On Kinder Morgan, she really wanted an answer from him. And I think the NDP war room learned a lesson in the last British Columbia election where uh, Adrian Dix, the former NDP leader, came out mid-campaign, totally surprised everyone, and uh, opposed Kinder Morgan. And the th same three people who are running Adrian Dix's campaign are now running Mr. Mulcair's campaign. And they were not going to let another leader, you know, die on that stake. And so uh, he, Elizabeth May, forced him to make a pronouncement, and he, you know, did not oppose this uh, this pipeline. So we get the first debate in the 2015 federal election campaign. And McLean's Magazine, your job is to cover the interests, cover the stories when it comes to the discussion. 11 weeks for this campaign. Is that just too long? Will this curb voter apathy and gain interest, or is this going to backfire? Well, I don't know. I mean, they do seem to sustain these long campaigns in the United States, but this is, uh, we're a different, we're a very different country. I think it's, you know, who knows? But uh, they do have Donald Trump down south, they and that do. changes the game altogether, considering what we saw last night. Is, it, is this legit? Do you, do you see Donald Trump going far in this race? Well, look, he's smart, he's rich, he's Why interesting, he and he uh, has wild say, things to say. So I think, uh, I think uh, we, have to do, we have to consider him a serious contender. It was interesting to watch the other nine people on stage just try and get some kind of face time on that particular debate. It was it seemed like a circus where Canadians truly felt Canadian last night. Right, right. I mean, and this is the person we're talking about the next day, so I think we do have to t take him seriously. The other important thing with Trump is that he connects with people who don't normally vote, and so I think that's why uh, American uh, pundits are really watching him. Just getting people to tune in. Well, Nancy, you know you're going to be busy over the next couple of months. Thanks for stopping by today and talking about the debate.